Hi, I'm Jill Heinerth. Let's dive into how your dive computer works. I'm Jill Heinerth, tech diver, instructor, and underwater explorer. I want to reach out with some information to clear up misconceptions about basic dive physics and physiology so that you're better equipped to understand how your dive computer works and how you can plan safe dives. As an underwater explorer, I know that diving tools like computers are critical for my ability to go to remote corners of our water planet. To stand up to modern exploration, these tools need to be constantly improved through research and testing. They are the technology enabling my work and also what helps me push the very limits of human potential. Almost every scuba diver has seen the same demonstration in class. Take two bottles of carbonated soda, then open the first bottle quickly to watch the formation of large bubbles. Then take the second bottle and open it slowly and you'll only hear a small burp or fizz. It's an excellent metaphor for what happens in the human body when ascending from a scuba dive. Gas is released from solution from our tissues when we ascend, when we come up from the dive. Let me describe this in a little bit more of a technical way. Oxygen molecules that we breathe become bound to blood by hemoglobin. And as we dive, they also dissolve into our blood plasma. Nitrogen, an inert gas, has absolutely no use in the human body. So it's dissolved into our tissues when we descend and stay down at depth. Basically, it's stored there temporarily until we come up. As the partial pressure of gases in our lungs increases, more of this gas dissolves into solution into our tissues. Descending increases ambient pressure surrounding our bodies. If you descend to 30 meters, 100 feet, four atmospheres, and stay there, eventually your tissues will saturate uniformly at this depth. You won't get bent if you stay there. The problem is when you ascend, when you lower the pressure that's exerted on your body. Our bodies are made up of different types of tissues, such as blood, brain, ligaments, skin, cartilage, bone, fat, and other organs. These tissues are perfused with blood in different amounts and therefore absorb and release dissolved gases at different rates. These different tissue types are grouped into compartments, a theoretical group of tissues that share similar gas saturation properties. In computations, each compartment uses a specific half time. A fast tissue compartment, such as blood, will on gas quickly. A slow tissue with less blood perfusion, such as bone, loads and releases gas slower. Applying the concept of half times means that the most significant degree of on-gassing occurs early and the rate of absorption slows over time. For instance, a tissue with a 60 minute half time fills up halfway after 60 minutes and then fills up half of the remaining in another 60 minutes. In other words, that 60 minute tissue is 75% full after 120 minutes. The same concept applies in the opposite direction when the diver swims up. Off-gassing continues well after surfacing, much like that soda pop that eventually goes flat over time if it's left exposed to ambient pressure, like when it sits on your kitchen countertop. To be clear, 
If you stay down, all your tissues will eventually fill with inert gas. As soon as you start to ascend, the reduced ambient pressure triggers off-gassing due to a mechanism called supersaturation. As you swim up, fully saturated tissues are not capable of holding on to the gas. The reduction in pressure causes the gas to diffuse from the tissues back to the lungs, and if you keep breathing, you'll be off-gassing. And if you ascend at a suitable rate, then you should give your body a chance to release the additional inert gas. But this is a mathematical algorithm applied to a great diversity of divers. The math does not account for your age, shape, size, hydration, injuries, thermal factors, or activity level. It's predictive and useful but not a guarantee that you'll never get bent. So what can you do to increase your safety margin when diving? First, be physically and mentally prepared for diving. Be well rested. Ascend within safe ascent rates that are dictated by your computer. Avoid tight equipment that constricts your circulation. Do a three to five minute safety stop at 15 feet or six meters on every dive, even deco dives. Increase the conservatism level on your computer. Stay properly hydrated. Avoid post-dive exertion, such as lugging tanks out of the water right after your dive. Carefully monitor exertion levels and thermal factors on dives so that they match during the working and decompression or safety stop phases of your dive. Use oxygen rich mixes to aid in off gassing if you're qualified to do so. Do some surface deco if the thermal factors allow you to do so. In other words, just hang out on the surface before getting out of the water. In the next video installment, I'll discuss the basics of how this math is applied to create a model for a diving table or computer. Join me next time. I'd like to thank Sunto for supporting this educational video series.